Hello, my name is Robin Mitchell and welcome to this episode for Electromaker. Today we're going to be looking at how to use the IoT Creators platform with a Nordic Thingy 91. So before we get into what IoT Creators actually is, we first need to understand why you may need to use it. So let's take a look at what IoT devices are in general. Now, we know what IoT devices are those things that connect to the internet and can connect to remote servers, submit data, take data and control devices. Now, one common platform that you may want to use is the ESP32. And this is particularly good for Wi-Fi projects. You can connect it to a home network, an office network, an industrial network, doesn't really matter. As long as you create a Wi-Fi network, you can use it. And then there's the second challenge involved with an IoT project, which is what you're going to connect it to on the other side. So of course we've connected it to a local router, but who's the recipient of the data or who's gonna be controlling this device? And in that case, it's almost always a remote server, but it could also be a local server. You could host it yourself. You can create your own protocols and there are genuinely no problems or issues. And there are many solutions out there which can help with this. But what if your device is in the middle of, let's say, a farm field or the outskirts of a city, or even worse, on the roof of a building where Wi-Fi is not even available. In that situation, you might have to think twice. And this is where the IoT Creators platform comes in. Essentially what this is doing is it provides you with a platform to submit and send data from, but that data can be accessed remotely on cellular networks, not Wi-Fi, meaning that if you have a device which can connect to a cell network, you can connect to the IoT Creators platform. Now, in this tutorial video, we're gonna be learning how to use the Nordic Thingy 91 with IoT Creators. And the really cool thing about the Nordic Thingy 91, bit of a mouthful, is that it has the ability to accept a SIM card because it communicates over cellular networks, or specifically, I'm using LTE-M. Okay, I'm just gonna go and pause the video here. I got a bit confused thinking that I was using the LTE-N network when I actually was using the MBIOT network. Basically, Nordic's program uh, told me that I was connected to LTE, but that's not the same as LTE-M. So I should probably point this out. Okay, let's get back to the video. So when you send data from a Thingy91 to IoT creators, it does it through HTTP posts and that makes the communication absolutely trivial. And that's actually very, very important. And I'll tell you why. Places that are remote that connect over cellular networks probably have issues with power. There's, I mean, it might have a battery that you could change, but imagine if you put this thing in the middle of a farm, are you gonna drive three hours every single time to recharge the batteries every two days? I didn't think so. And so in those cases, you need to have a device that can save energy as much as it can or generate its own energy. Even if it's connected to something like a solar panel, you still may have times where there's not enough energy to power your device. And so you need to minimize the energy uh, usage as much as possible. And that's the main, or I would, I would argue is the primary focus of Nordic devices to get that energy usage as low as possible. And so when you minimize that energy usage, you can maximize the life of the device. And so IoT creators have recognized this and so all of their uh, transactions or messaging between your device and the uh, platform is done via HTTP post, which is very, very simple. One of the lovely things about using cellular as well is that it's roaming. Uh, and this is something you can't do with Wi-Fi. Well, I suppose you can do it with mesh networks, but it's very complicated. Basically, cellular was designed with roaming between different cell towers in mind. You take one of these devices, you drive across the country, it will keep connecting to different stations and it will work flawlessly. And so you don't have to keep reconnecting it or reconfiguring it every time it decides to go to a new cell tower. Of course, it's not just MBIoT or LTE-M uh, that it works with. It also works with LoRa. LoRa? LoRa? depends how you pronounce it, but that really awesome network uh, of low, long range, uh, low energy radio, where you can get ranges of in excess of like 30 kilometers, I think. It's quite impressive what I've seen in that field. But yes, it works with all the major remote wireless solutions. Now, for those who may be interested, I cannot confirm or deny this, or should I say IoT creators couldn't confirm more denies, but what I do understand is that they are in the process of working with eSIMs and SIMless designs. So we could see in the near future, IoT creators opening themselves up to these smaller reduced sizes. And that would be pretty awesome for, especially for designs that are remote, when it need to be small and portable. So now that we've seen what IoT creators is, 
let's learn how to use it with a Nordic Thingy 91. Now, before we jump ahead and start registering accounts and stuff like that, the first thing we need to do is find the box that our Nordic Thingy 91 came in, look at the front, and you'll see that there is an IMEI number, and this is crucial because this is how we register this device with IoT creators. However, there is another way to get access to this number, and I believe all we have to do is open the device. And as we can see right here on our Thingy91, we have a sticker with some random data on, and on top of that sticker is the IMEI number. But I suggest you always keep the box because it's kind of annoying to keep taking this thing off, plus you risk damaging stuff. So when you receive your SIM card from IoT Creators, you'll have to pop that into your Thingy91. And then we go ahead and close that back up. This is one of the features I find quite neat about the Thingy91. They really did design it with sort of like portability and uh, rig uh, rigidity, strength in mind, because it's got a nice silicon sort of silicone packaging, you know, like a, a casing, and it's quite uh, it's quite sturdy. The casing's very thick, and it's got a nice hole here that you can sort of hang it onto something. And it's also got a mounting hole at the back as well, so you could put this on a wall and use it as like an environmental sensor. And oh yeah, look at that. The uh, casing even has uh, holes on the side so air can rush through and get to the different sensors. So yeah, it's a pretty cool sensor platform. So now that we've looked at what IoT Creators is, it's time to learn how to use it with the Thingy91. And in this basic tutorial, we're gonna get this thing to send a hello world message to an IoT Creators server. Now, you may be thinking, we can go ahead and plug this straight in. Unfortunately, that's not the case. We have to put some special firmware on there first. The firmware we're going to be adding to this device will allow us to use it as a modem. We can send 80 commands to it and then it will interpret those and then connect to a network and send some data over the internet. So to do that, the first thing we're going to need to do is to download NRF Connect for Desktop. Now you can find this by going onto Google, simply searching NRF Connect for Desktop, and then you'll be presented with an option of the latest version. Now I suggest that you always go for the very, very top result. In this case, it's NRF Connect Setup 3.11.0. But you can choose an earlier version if you want, but I don't recommend it. Always go for the latest version. So once that's downloaded and installed, you'll be presented with a window that looks a bit like this. Now, I've got some other things on here because I've been playing around with some other devices and I've installed some different packages, but the most important thing that you need is the programmer and the LTE link monitor. So if you don't have either of these, you can install them through this app. Now, before we connect the Thingy91, we also need to get the firmware that it's going to run. And we can find that from the link on the IoT Creators site with the Hello World introduction for the Nordic Thingy91. Now, a quick note, you can't click the link. You have to click it with the middle mouse button or open it in, in a new tab because NRF won't allow for IoT Creators to embed their website in theirs. Don't worry about it, just do a middle click and it will take you straight to the firmware page like this. And it's important that you click the very top link here, thingy91 underscore FW underscore 2022. Yours will probably be a newer version, but at the time of recording, this was the latest version. So we go ahead and download that, drag it to the desktop and extract the files. With the files extracted, it's time to now put it onto our thingy91. Now, what that means is we need to go ahead and start by sliding the on switch to the off position. We will connect our USB micro B. And the most important thing is we're going to hold the middle button while turning it on. Now it's in firmware boot mode where it's going to accept firmware from the programmer. So we open up the programmer and on the top left, we go ahead and click select device and we can see our thingy 91 there. We then click add file, we browse to the folder that contains the firmware that we downloaded, and we're going to select this zip file here, mfw underscore nrf9160. Once you've clicked this file, you need to make sure that enable MCU boot is on and then hit write. Now this process can take as long as five minutes and it's absolutely essential that you do not turn this device off you do not disconnect it and you don't experience any brownouts or any power downs on your computer because if you do, you may brick the device because this is a firmware update. Now, that may not necessarily be the case, but I wouldn't risk it. So absolutely, absolutely make sure the power is on and don't turn it off. Once you've added the firmware file, 
you then need to repeat this for the modem firmware. Once the firmware has been downloaded, you then need to load the modem application into the Thingy91 as well. And it's exactly the same process. You click add file, you go to browse, and this time you go into the folder which says image FOTA underscore DFU underscore hex, not bin, hex. And then you're going to select this file here, serial LTE modem. You know it's worked because you've got a file memory layout over here on the right. And just like before, make sure enable MCU boot is on and then click right. And this will put the modem firmware onto our device. Once that's done, we need to test to see if this is actually working. So we're gonna go ahead and reboot this device like that, on off. And then we're going to click the LTE link monitor. On the top left, we have select device. So we will select the thingy 91. And as we can see immediately, this serial terminal sent an AT command and it came back as okay. Anything in yellow is what this serial terminal sends. Anything in white is the response. Now the LTE link monitor is a really nice piece of software because it combines a serial terminal with AT commands, a log at the bottom, and details on our network on the left and about our device, including UART, modem, LTE. We can see the signal strength, the network we're connected to. It is absolutely fantastic. So before we get ahead of ourselves and try and start using IoT creators, we've got to test to see if this actually connects to a network. Now, this is where we have this notepad of all these different commands. You don't need to worry about these two down here. You need to worry about these ones here. And in specifically, you need to worry about the second one and the third one, and I'll show you why in a second. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the system mode with this command. And as you can see, we get OK. The second command essentially chooses which provider and which band you're gonna be using. Can't do a copy and paste, there we go. And the most important number in this command is this number here. And you can find the correct number by going to the roaming section on IoT Creators, link in the description below. And you need to look at this table here, MBIoT in Europe, if you're in Europe, to find your country and the provider. In the United Kingdom, it's Vodafone, so it's 23415. If it was Finland, it'd be 24491. And if it was Belgium, it could be 20620 or 20610, depending on the provider. We're Vodafone, United Kingdom, so we use 23415. So we click send, okay. Now the third command has a parameter that may be different depending on your provider. For Vodafone in the UK, this was the network that I was connecting to but it may differ in different countries. So you need to find out which one you need to connect to. The fourth piece of code is just CEREG5. And what that's doing is whenever there's an update on the network status or IP address or whatever, it will immediately tell us. We don't have to keep probing it. You don't need this command, but it's useful to have as you'll see in a second. So we go ahead and click send. Now up to this point, we haven't actually connected to the network. We've just set the data ready to go. To actually connect, we use AT plus C fun one. And when we send this, this guy is gonna kick into action and try and connect. Now this can take a little while. Mine takes about 10 to 15 seconds. So once I click send, the device is now trying to connect and we'll see on the left here that things will flash, things will change as it connects. So let's just give it a few seconds. Oh, there we go, already got the response. LTE is connected to Vodafone as we can see. We've got an IP address for ourselves of 11.0.10.117 and we are now ready to connect to the IoT Creators site. Now that we've connected our device to the network, it's time to register it with IoT Creators. So the first thing we need to do on IoT Creators is to create a project and we can do that by clicking see our different plans. Now, the plan that you're gonna go for will depend on your project. If it's just a maker project, you can do the starter kit that's free and you can order a SIM card from them and get dev, dev kits, but I was already sent this and I've got a SIM card with it. So I'm gonna name this project as another new project. We're gonna make sure that MB-IoT is selected and we're gonna select the personal industry. It's not really important, it's just data for them to know how their services are being used. Now I've already got a SIM card, so I'm gonna skip all this stuff down here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click send and now on our dashboard, as we can see, we have a brand new project being established. 
Now we need to give this about 15 or 20 seconds because it takes time for them to establish the project and create it. If we try and go straight into it, it might turn some errors. So we've waited about 10 seconds now. So we're gonna go ahead and click details. And as you can see, the it's not ready yet. Yes, as we can see, this is not ready yet. So we're gonna go back and wait, go back in, and now it's ready. And I know it's ready because we've got devices and IMEIs down here. So now that we've created our new project, it's time to register the device. So we click register device and we insert the IMEI number. In my case, it's 35, uh, 3526, sorry, 3526-561-00750465, 3525-561-00750465. And we're going to select the protocol as being UDP. Hit register device. And as we can see, our device is registered. Now we're gonna go back to the serial monitor and we're now going to send some data to IoT creators. And this is where the last two lines of code come in. So we're going to select this piece of code here, this AT command. This establishes a socket. And now this is the piece of code that we're most concerned about. The IP address here, 172.27.131.100 is the IP address of the IoT creator server. Do not touch it. This is the port number, again, do not touch it. And this is the data packet that we're gonna send. And we could put anything in here, hello world, goodbye world, some temperature settings, whatever. But this command will send a message to the IoT creator's server. Now it's sent. So to see the data that we sent, we go to our project. We can see our device here. We've got a payload, that's the data we just sent. We're gonna click it to copy it. It's in hexadecimal format, so we're going to need to convert it. So we paste it here into this quick converter, click convert. And as we can see, we have the word hello world, which means we have sent hello world over MBIOT using the thingy91 to iotcreators.com. Another really great feature about the IT creators platform is that we can reroute messages to our own custom servers. So for example, under our project, we can go to details and we can go to your application server. And here we can enter a URL that will be called upon receiving messages and then we can add additional headers. Now the ability to add a custom header is very useful because it allows us to send additional data attached to our messages, whether it's to call a specific server, a specific function, or maybe to use a specific protocol. So far in this demonstration video, we've been using the Thingy91 with the IoT Creators platform. But the really cool thing is that the IoT Creators platform is device agnostic, meaning that any device that can connect to a cellular network can use IoT Creators. So one resource that the IoT Creators has is their own dedicated forum. And here we can see all the other challenges that other creators have had and the solutions to those challenges. For those looking to develop their projects further, there's also a developer section, and that includes things like API documentation, network information, and coverage maps. Under the IoT documentation, we have a lot of stuff, including general information, getting started with IoT creators, and there's also a section for those looking to get serious with IoT creators, maybe to create a commercial device. And one particular link that's quite useful is the AT command cheat sheet. So as we said before, we were using the Thingy91, which is a Nordic NRF91, but maybe we decide to use a different device in an end project, maybe something like the U-Blocks. So from here, we can actually see all the different AT commands for that specific product and how to use it with the IoT Creators platform. So now that we've demonstrated the Thingy91 connecting to the IoT Creators uh, site and then sending data and then reading that data, the next question is, where do we go from here? Now, my experience with the Nordic range of products is very, very limited, and I'm still learning the Zephyr system. So as of now, I couldn't make this device take data from the onboard sensors and send it over and all that jazz. However, I did realize one thing, which is quite funny. You can use the Nordic Thingy91 as a modem device to another board. So let's say, for example, you're someone like me who likes to use a lot of through-hole technology with PIC chips, you could get something like this to communicate with this over a serial port. And then this would simply use AT commands as we saw earlier with the Thingy91 to send data to the IoT Creators Studio. Not only would that greatly simplify the construction and getting into IoT devices, maybe for someone like me, it also means that you can, as well, if you needed to, use much more powerful devices, better processors, or even a computer on its own. In actual fact, you could connect this to a computer and use it as a modem for that. Of course, that would be a bit of a strange thing to do, but you could do it. 
But in terms of using it as a modem with a standard microcontroller, it's definitely within the realms of possibility. Now, for those who are familiar with NRF devices, you can go absolutely crazy into this guy. You can program both cores. You know, you've got your modem core on one side, you've got your application core on the other side. You can make all the things you want it to do, connect to the sensors, I, I2C, uh, UR, uh, it has things like ADCs and DACs. You can do all of that and have it basically do whatever it is that you want using the IT Creators platform as your connection. Or you could even take it further and use the other services that IT Creators is compatible with, including things like Azure and Amazon Web Services. All of the hardware shown in this video can be obtained from the Electromaker store. See the links in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.